Welcome to the Wisdom Series right, right here on Health 360 Network, Balajan. And yes, uh, you could be probably listening to us on the radio as well. Uh, driving to your offices right now or driving back home. Uh, whatever it is, of course, Balajan, welcome to the series. And yes, this is a Wisdom Series which is brought to you by Pragnya.org. And uh, this, as you know, is hosted, uh, uh, of course, by uh, Dr. Shani Robbins, who is an uh, instructor at Stanford and also a licensed psychologist and also a double doctorate in mindfulness and also wisdom therapy, Balajan. And he pioneered this concept of wisdom therapy and he is sharing with you guys on air and also on the wisdom series over here um, the wisdom skills which he has studied and uh, which of course is uh, empirical evidence of eastern philosophy and western philosophy put together and uh, simple things which you can do on a day-to-day -day basis to make sure we all could lead this developmentally oriented lifestyle uh, let me first welcome in the studio dr robbins how are you doing i'm doing great Thank how you was your me. day been good it's been very good blue skies sun is out can't complain. I know. I was trying to uh, exercise empathy and a little bit of stuff I learned from you. I uh, appreciate that. Yeah. How was hey, your day? Uh, it was wonderful. Thank you so okay. much for asking. Uh, you know, it's, it's actually gotten better after I looked at your smiling face. <laughs> and, uh, you kind of... Smooth. You, the radiance, uh, you know, is... Um, you just can't... You can't escape it. <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, I want to ask you about the, you know, in the, in the talks we've been having, you talked about multiple things, and some of the things our, our bandhus also listening to us might uh, feel our jargon or something which might be really technical to understand. So like, for instance, um, we, we in detail discussed about emotional intelligence. We can't get an idea around that part. Uh, while you were discussing these things, you even talked about something called as cognitive distortion. And uh, typically, if uh, most of us would understand what cognition is, uh, as you said, rightly, it's about thinking process or something like that. And distortion, of course, we know what distortion. When you put them together, that's a concept which sometimes people don't understand. I might not. I, I still am not clear. I, I'm not clear as to when you said cognitive distortion, what exactly it is. Can you a little bit describe for us and give us some examples how yeah. we can understand wrap our head around this? Yeah. So I mean, uh, just uh, th there's a 30 second history here where psychology came from Freudian psychoanalysis, where a lot of it was focused on unconscious drives, mm -hmm. things we're not aware of. Uh, defense mechanisms, so mm -hmm. things like uh, when people say denial is not just a river in Egypt, uh, what they mean by <laughs> that is that a lot of us use denial in our everyday life, and yeah. there's something to that. But it turns out there's also some other things that are m even more direct and, and, and over several decades have proven to be very effective in becoming aware. And those are the thoughts that we typically have that are connected to our emotions like anger, anxiety, stress, depression. Mm -hmm. And those thoughts have been identified by two pioneers primarily, Albert Ellis uh, coined uh, Rational Emotive Behavioral Therapy mm -hmm. and Aaron Beck coined Cognitive Therapy as two fields very similar to one another. And the mm -hmm. idea is that the thoughts we have are dramatically influencing the emotions we feel. If we have realistic thoughts, so for example, if we wake up in the morning, we get on a road to work, and we, if we tell ourselves, oh, that 10-mile commute should only take me five minutes, Mm -hmm. at 8 a.m., mm -hmm. we're going to be incredibly disappointed because we're going to get on the road and we're going to see a million cars in front of us. Okay. And we're going to be very surprised that it's almost like we're telling ourselves, I can't believe all the cars are not parting like the Red Sea in front of me. <laughs> you know, how dare they use, the, use uh, my roads? You don't have the staff. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so didn't they get my memo that I'm going to be on the road this morning? <laughs> and true. so... It happens so, to me always. Yeah, it's... it's but if we implicitly are almost assuming that because we we keep getting upset that people are in front of us on the road and we're moving slowly. So the f the feeling of uh, uh, having this notion that we are uh, we sh we should have had a, a clear road uh, is a distortion. So there's a distortion. There's a should. So okay. distortions like shoulds, must, uh -huh. all or nothing thinking, catastrophizing, mind reading, fortune telling, are half a dozen or so, uh -huh. the dozen or so distortions that are very typical. And so shoulds is a whopping big one. Oh. Um, I had a mentor once that said, Sonny, stop shooting all over yourself. <laughs> Mark Reed uh, was a great mentor. And okay. uh, so he taught me to catch my shoulds. Uh -huh. And when I do that, I tend to be less frustrated because I'm more realistic about the world, what the world is like rather than what it should be like. Interesting. Imagine if we started flapping our arms and just assume we need we should be taking off and there shouldn't be gravity. Yeah, I should be attaining that yeah. like levitation. Yeah, levitation, <laughs> gravity, and, and, and there may be some powers of levitation we don't know about, but gravity is also a factor okay. that we do know about. So here's what I'm going to throw right now. So should not matter something like a distortion? Yes. But how about something, let's say you're talking about traffic, you said, uh, you know, you go there if the expectation didn't happen and you suddenly it's a distortion 
you're in traffic, you know that when you go back, you're going to be late for work, and your boss is going to yell at you when you get there. You know, that's what yeah. about that kind of thought? So your boss may yell at you when you get there. There's fortune telling, right? Oh. So assuming we know what the future is, and we don't. In this case, it's maybe an hour into the future. People assume a month from now, a year from now, they know what the future is. The greatest computers in the world and the smartest people in the world can't even tell what the weather will be like next week. Mm. much less what next month or next That's year. True. And we I'm get so anxious about that. I, I heard about the weather report also as being more fictional, as in it's supposed to be that way, but it might not That's right. rain. It might rain, but not rain. That's right. That's even uh, a few days ahead, even yeah. today or tomorrow. So, But when we get on a freeway and the traffic is slowing down, that creates, again, an opportunity to practice. And so someone once famously said, wisdom is what you get when you don't get what you want. <laughs> and, uh, and that's why things are opportunities. I have a lot of wisdom, Dr. Roberts. There you go. <laughs> I have a lot of wisdom. Yeah, you Wait, you, I, did I just, oh my god, I caught myself. Humility. Ah. Well, that's, that's, a, that's good practice. <laughs> um, Assuming it's real humility rather than false humility, but that's another conversation. Oh, conversation, yes. Uh, but coming but, back to distortion, I get what you're saying there, yes. But it, it is nice you, ca you catch those, and all we can all catch those, and, and use those opportunities to practice and, and just remind ourselves that, of course, the world is not conforming to everything I want and demand. Mm -hmm. That's what makes me think that it should be that way. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, there's some challenges in the world. Everybody has challenges. Everybody struggles so, to some extent. And so these are just mine. So you, you named a few distortions. So are there anything else which, uh, you know, like, for instance, let's say, uh, okay, we talked about some scenario like traffic, something very simple as traffic where you can actually you can catch your distortions there. Um, how about let's say we're having, a, you know, talking to somebody, a personal relationship or interpersonal communication which you're doing with somebody and uh, you get into an argument. Uh, in that scenario, is there some distortion which you can catch? Because that, we always have it. We find conflicts. but not may not be the two people think alike, right? Yeah. So, so in, re in relationships, for example, one person says to the other, you're always doing that. So all or nothing thinking. And wow. it's horrible when you're late. So we're catastrophizing. And so all or nothing thinking, catastrophizing, name calling, these are cognitive distortions as well, rather oh. than you're doing it more than I would like, or can you do it a little bit less? Or like, for instance, my boss always yelling at me. That's right. Wow. And if we're late to work, for example, and we can dovetail the two together, if we do catch traffic, we may be fortune telling that when I get to work, not only will my boss yell at me, which may be fortune telling, that may be a distortion. He may or may not yell at me, he or she. But he may as well. But let's say he does yell at us. Mm -hmm. Why is that so, so catastrophic? We could say he's going to yell at me, and that's kind of frustrating and uncomfortable. Hmm. That would be the realistic response, rather than he's going to yell at me, and that's going to be horrible. I because it. maybe it's not just emotionally horrible, but also I may get fired if he's yelling at me. So What's so the correct, evidence for that? So correct me if I'm wrong. So this cognitive distortion can happen as an automatic thought sometimes. Right, it's because times. it's practiced. Yeah. So let's say the scenario of somebody coming in later, oh, my, my boss always yelling at me, uh, in a different perspective could be the boss could be having a distortion. Like if you're, if our bandhus right now are there who are actually have to have uh, uh, people reporting to them and they think, oh, this guy's always giving me reports late or this guy always makes an error. So is that a distortion also is my question. Yes, so, and, and you've named that, that the person is, there's an all or nothing aspect to it. Mm. There's a... Uh, uh, catastrophizing, it's a black and white thinking kind of distortion. And then we can follow it up that, well, what if the person is doing it more than I would like? Is that really that catastrophic or is it just uncomfortable? So we can do these so-called thought records and basically what we're doing is we're in effect taking the thoughts we had that we've been practicing and it became automatic thoughts mm -hmm. that are not realistic and we're with intention augmenting them to make them more realistic based on evidence in the world, based hmm. on evidence that we think is evidence. Hmm. And so instead of the, there'll never be traffic and there shouldn't be traffic, of course there'll be traffic quite a bit from 7.30 to 9, 9.30 or so. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we can bring in some of the other skills like empathy and compassion. Of course there's traffic, that's realism, mm -hmm. because other people need to get to work too. They have that need, it's not just my need. Empathy, empathy and compassion. There you go, yeah. And then, by the way, I'm grateful for even having a car, so gratitude practice kicks in. Yes. And so we haven't talked about that as much. We'll do it in another segment. But these multiple skills can kick in, and so a 30-second frustration at traffic can usher in this window of opportunity to practice half a dozen wisdom skills. So let's say, uh, to, to catch a distortion, Dr. Robbins, a quick question would be, uh, how do you identify that, uh, given that could be an automatic thought? 
uh, given the fact that you actually are in the situation uh, and you are in the thing. So you did you did say you got to catch it. So when you want to catch a distortion, uh, some tips how they can identify it. Great question. And the short version of that is it's a long conversation, but the quick version is. Whenever you feel one of four or five emotions, there's likely a cognitive distortions there. Irritation, frustration, anger, stress, anxiety. Whoa. Those are good five ones. I'm just experiencing an extended level of empathy right now. Everybody listening to us and watching us right now saying, yeah, I feel it all the time. <laughs> yeah, and, and many of us feel those five emotions frequently. Yeah. When you feel one of those, stress, anxiety, anger, when you feel one of those, there's likely a cognitive distortion there. Hmm. Or if it, it likely would not be that intense. There are exceptions. Mm. There are some brutal things in life that happen. Those are the exceptions. Mm. I'm talking about the 99% of life of the other situations, like traffic, waiting in line, someone insulting us. Mm -hmm. Even a breakup is not catastrophic. It's unpleasant, mm. but it's not life-threatening. Yeah, and somebody who's unpleasant suddenly you say, oh, that person irritates me. Is again a cognitive distortion, probably. Well, I may feel irritated. That's not a distortion. That, That's realistic. I yeah. feel irritated right now. Okay. But I'm irritated because that person is all bad. That's mm. a distortion. Or that person is always doing that to me. That's a distortion. And of course, we actually in conversation right here with Dr. Shani Robbins. As you guys uh, have been following the series, uh, we have a bunch of wonderful uh, wisdom skills we're sharing with you guys, which you can understand about this. And uh, distortions is something which is a pretty big, uh, I would say, a big topic. And uh, if you want to read up more about this, if you want to listen to more talks about distortions, we actually have audio series also. We provide the link for you guys right below there. You can go check out. In fact, Dr. Robbins has given us uh, each distortion in, in detail and how it, how you guys identify those things uh, given certain scenarios and of course there are many scenarios and how Dr. Robbins always keeps saying life throws uh, opportunities for us to practice almost every every moment of time uh, and uh, could be uh, those those five emotions how many of you actually feel it I, I I feel it as often because maybe traffic doing it or I might read a news item in the morning which is, sometimes gives me some kind of anxiety as opposed to anything else and many of us out here of course South Asians we also feel that uh, anxiety and if you're minorities even more uh, mm -hmm. the insecurity you might feel and all those things. And in fact, he has talked in detail about these things in the audio series, but then go look it up. Uh, we'll provide the link for you guys down there. And if you want to reach out to Dr. Robbins, as you know, he also off, uh, he offers consultation one-on-one -on -one, or could be group sessions or something for your company or your group, your team members, if you want to actually do something uh, where you guys can get on the path of developmental living. Um, definitely contact him on his website, wisdomtherapy.com. Again, wisdomtherapy.com. Or you can reach us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash radio dhotties. Uh, now, opportunity for me to practice gratitude. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Robbins. And of course, I want to ask you a request, basically. Uh, every session, uh, you end up kind of a joke. Yeah. Uh, do you have something to get us smiling all over again? So uh, I'm putting you on the spot. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't no, no, know. It's, it's, it's fun, though. But no, uh, So humor, I think, is actually, and uh, it, ha it hasn't been made that explicit enough, but humor, I think, is part of wisdom, that not, just not taking ourselves too seriously. Mm -hmm. um, so probably we could end with this, that as we're talking about opportunities to practice, what we're noticing is that we're taking full responsibility for what we think and how we feel. Mm -hmm. It's not that person insulted me, that's why I'm upset, or I lost a job, that's why I'm angry or mm -hmm. stressed. Mm -hmm. We're deciding to be angry and stressed based on how we're viewing things. So we own this. And if we practice and get more skilled, our emotions will shift. And so uh, there's a joke of a boxing match. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the person I heard this joke from actually was a form. I was uh, doing a, a center for seniors at, one pl at Monterey at some point, And uh, ah. there was uh, a meeting on, on, on organizational leaders and uh, the former U.S. Secretary of Defense, wow. Panetta, dropped in on this meeting. Nice. He, he has the Panetta Institute in Monterey. Uh -huh. And the theme of the evening is how can you make a difference on a practical level? Use opportunities around you to make a difference, which is the theme of what we're talking about in practicing. Mm -hmm. And so he started his talk about doing practical things and taking responsibility with the, with this following joke so we can end with this that you have a boxing match, two boxers are there, and in the beginning of the match, one of the boxers does this. Okay. And, flex. <laughs> and uh, rabbi and a priest are sitting in the audience, and uh, rabbi looks over at the priest and says, what does that mean? And the priest says, not a damn thing if you can't fight. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, people listen to the audio uh, audio version of it on the radio. You might not understand what exactly it is, but uh, go check out the video scene. That's the thing for you guys. That's right. So, uh, and of course, Bajaj, that was uh, again the wisdom series for you guys. And of course, we try to see if we can make it as light hearted as possible. And yes, here's what an opportunity for you guys. If at all you have certain scenarios which you feel um, uh, something which is really is bothering you, and you want to know uh, how we can deal with those situations, you can feel free to contact him directly or just send us a message. We'll see if we can actually include that one of our questions to Dr. Robbins and he can address it for you guys for sure. And uh, yes, uh, commenting down there is also available or you also can go and uh, uh, post on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Radio Hotties. Once again, thank you so much, Dr. Robbins. Um, we'll hope to talk to you with more series, wis wisdom skills as we come on in that series. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thank you so much. And of course, Bajaj, I told you, if you want to actually get more information about all the wisdom skills, we also have the links for you guys to go read up. Uh, the video series are pretty much already started right now. But before the video series, we actually had the audio series. Uh, we covered a whole lot of stuff about the uh, cognitive distortions, the wisdom skills, and everything. And if we go and listen to all those things, as we told you always, Bajan, our goal here, and also of Pragnya, is to make sure everybody actually start to lead a developmentally oriented lifestyle. And the same thing which totally is in sync with what Dr. Robbins also feels. So hence we share these wisdom skills with you guys and hoping the world will be a better place. Uh, thank you so much for being atten uh, paying attention to our CDs and, uh, and thanks for all the wonderful things sending us in terms of feedback and responses. Uh, we will see you in the next CDs with more information. Mm -hmm.